Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Huh? yeah. What the fees? 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 What's up, y'all? Um, that video, that intro that y'all just seen. That was the original intro. Um, for the people who don't know, I originally started from telling jokes on TikTok. Uh, I made that intro when I was still in school. And I just decided to use it again because after YouTube, after emailing this platform back and forth so many times, they finally told me that the reason a lot of my videos was getting a lot uh the limited message was because of the original intro that I was using with my brother song plan because of uh, all the cussing he doing on it. So I just took that off, put this up real quick. I'm going to just try this out just to see, you know, how it does it, if, it, if there's any difference or anything like that. Um, yeah, um, so check this out, man. I'm going to tell you all about... This story about these two dudes, man. Now, when I, when I, I'm going to tell you something. When I very first came in, when I very, very, very first entered the um system, the phones was not as popular as it was right before I left, if that makes sense. There was phones. People had phones, but it wasn't as popular. So, like, when I just left, everybody had them. Literally, everybody had them. Out of a hundred man dorm, it's probably sixty or seventy phones in there. When I first came in, a hundred man dorm, it might be about four or five phones. See what I'm saying? So the whole having the phone thing wasn't popular. So it was writing letters, writing letters, and talking on the uh, prepaid phone was the biggest things going on. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to tell you what dudes used to always do. Dudes would, like, they they play the back door games. You know what I'm saying? So if you got a girl, and I don't got a girl, um, I see that your girl deal with you, and you in the same situation I'm in, so she might deal with me too. So I try to contact that girl some type of way. And uh, I try to down talk you and make her deal with me. Sometimes people successful, sometimes people not. I'm going to tell you today about an unsuccessful situation like that. Um, and that's why, like, when I came in, what I started doing, because I used to do a lot of writing to my mom, my baby mom. So once I peaked the mood, what was going on, I used to rip off the... Uh, like when I get a letter from somebody, their information, that little section on the envelope where they name, address, I rip that off, rip it up in small pieces and flush it down the toilet. So if anybody ever trying to write my people a letter, they won't know where to send the letter because I don't keep the address on there. So, um, and you know, that's just to avoid problems. I know I'm going to act crazy if you do it. So just to avoid problems, I'm going to stop you from even having the opportunity to do it. You know what I'm saying? But, um, man, it was these two guys, man. I know for a fact one of them, um, go upstairs. Go. 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 This dog don't listen. But, um. I know one of them name, we call them bunk mate. That's crazy. That's a crazy name. Cause you know, everybody got a bunk mate. And this dude's name just so happened to be bunk mate. Uh his name was Bunk Mate. Another dude's name was Dang, I can't think of his name for nothing. We just gonna call him Big Boy, cause he was a real, real, real heavy set type of guy. Um I was at Smith State Prison. Now, the the big dude, Big Boy, he was very Funny. I used to love being around this dude because he was like a comedian, you know what I'm saying? And it's like the environment we was in, the situation was so bad that whenever you could get a little piece or get you a little laugh in, man, it was like that meant everything in the world. 
then he kind of helped me, you know, grow a little bit and understand how to be serious. But then you could be yourself, too, maybe with certain people. Because, you know, I'm like a little comedian. I like to laugh. I think everything funny. But being at those type of prisons, it's like I'm not really being me because every day I'm out here like this. I'm on alert. I ain't paying it. I'm not even – if I think something funny, you would never know it. You know what I'm saying? But he just showed me, like, bro, it's okay. You could be you no matter where you at. You know what I'm saying? Just know – if anybody take that the wrong way and it's time to handle business, just handle business. And I learned that from him. But uh, he was real funny, man. And all he do all day, make jokes. Listen, he looked so funny. He's short. He probably was like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, real, real, real heavy set. I'm talking about swinging. I'm talking about he big. And uh, he... He, he had about four or five teeth missing out in front of his mouth. I don't know how. I don't know if he got into uh, previous fights or whatever the case happened. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so, like I say, he funny. Now, I know for a fact a lot of people take that for weakness. I have seen situations where he get to arguing with people and, you know, the other person to try to, like, say something on a more aggressive side. Like, man, you ain't talking about nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, on something like that because of, uh, because of the way he usually kick it and be joking and stuff like that. So people feel like he's sweet, he's soft or something like that. Now, we used to always talk and play, man. Always talk and play about stuff. And the subject came up one time about how people be like reaching out to other people's family, trying to get them to holler at them or like they might reach out to your girl trying to holler at your girl or whatever the case is. And we made a joke one time, man. And uh, he said one time, he said, uh, he said, Bill, bro, I ain't going to lie to you. Somebody ever do something like that, reach out to my family like that, it's going to be over with for them. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get, you know, basically what I'm saying. And, um, uh, you know, I just was basically agreeing with him. I'm like, yeah, but I ain't playing no games like that. I know I'll go crazy about something like that. And uh, like I said, it was all jokes. Now, what I did used to always tell Big Boy, because his family sent him a lot of cards, like just cards just to, you know, help him stay motivated, like thanking of you cards, any holiday, holiday cards, birthday, happy birthday cards, missing you cards, stuff like that, you know, little colorful envelopes. And the way the windows was, it was a long window, like on one whole side of the wall. The window probably was like that wide. The card fit in it perfectly. So the length of a, of a, of a card from the dollar store, it fit in that window perfectly. It's about that wide, but it's just long. Now, he used to put his cards in that window to keep the sun out the room. When you, Because the sun be coming through, it be hot. If you put something in the windows, it'll block the sun off. So he used to use the cards for that. But he had the front side facing to the room. And I used to always tell him, like, bro, why you don't just rip off your address, scratch it out, turn the cards around so that side facing outside? Why do you got it facing this side? Like, what if somebody try to contact your people or something? So uh, he used to always say, but he'd make a joke out of it. Like, well, I ain't worried about that. Somebody try to contact my folks. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But it was a joke. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, bro. I was just, you know, trying to give you a little heads up or whatever the case is. So he like, no, nah, I ain't worried about it. Every single time I have ever seen this dude talk to this dude anything, he's at some point he's about to laugh and joke about something. I remember he got into a, He got to scrapping with somebody. He, I'm talking about they were down there scrapping for real. And he came up to my room. He was looking crazy. And when I looked at him, he bust out laughing. Like, he was a real comedian for real. Um, one day, he was down there on the phone. He was on the, uh, the, the prepaid, the collect phone. And he came up the steps. He was frowned up. And I looked at him. <laughs> and I just went to giggling a little bit, looking at him. Because I knew he was about to come say something crazy. But he didn't. He didn't smile. He looked me right in my eyes. He didn't smile. He walked straight past me. I was like, what's up, big boy? He kept walking. I said, something ain't right. Big boy going through something. Something ain't right. 
So I waited a minute, waited a minute. I was just trying to see if he was going to uh, end up coming back out the room. He didn't. So about an hour later, I went down there. He laid back on the bed like this, got his eyes closed, got his hand over his head. First thing come to my mind, he done had a death in the family or something. So, you know, when whenever somebody on the inside going through something, man, that's why it's so good to pay attention, have good judgment, because you should be able to read body language and know. If you're usually in a jolly mood, but you're not today, I'm not about to play with you. Because I don't know what you got going on. You might just spaz, and, you know, we don't want to do that. So, um, I was like, what's up, big boy? You all right? He didn't even look at me, bro. He didn't even open his eyes. He didn't even move. He was just like, Bill, I don't want to talk right now, bro. And I was like, damn. I walked out the room. I told him, all right, I walked out the room. Um, now, the dude bump mate, big boy and bump mate was cool. They was like this. They used to play all day. Bump mate, he play all day like that too. Bump mate was a little bigger than big boy, like in height. He was taller. He wasn't bigger because bump mate was kind of skinny. Um, he was kind of skinny, like tall, dark skinned guy. Big boy, short, big old guy. Um, so, bump mate came down to me. I was standing on the rail outside my room, and I'm just chilling. Probably a couple hours later, he pulled up. He was like, hey, Bill. I'm like, what's up? He looked back to the big boy room, then he looked over the, back to me. He was like, what's up with big boy? He all right? I was like, bro, I don't know. I think he going through something, bro, because I went down there early and tried to holler at him. He said, he ain't want to talk, he ain't want to kick it or nothing. I said, you ain't holler at him? He said, yeah, I went over there. He pretty much told me the same thing. He told me he ain't trying to talk. So I was like, I don't know, bro. He might be going through something or whatever. So um, I went back down there. Now, it's been about two, three hours went by. He was standing up reading something, like a piece of paper. And when I went in there, I was like, what's up, big boy? He was like, bro, I don't want to talk, bro. So I just walked out again, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, bro, I don't know what you got going on. You know, now it's starting to make my paranoia kick in a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because if I'm cool with you, I rock with you every day, even if you're going through something, bro, I feel like, you should at least, at least tell me something more than, bro, I don't want to talk. You know what I'm saying? Because if if I'm if I'm keep telling somebody, bro, I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk, it's probably something you done did. You know what I'm saying? Or it's probably me trying to make a decision in my mind if I'm about to do something to you. So that's just how I think. So I'm like, you know, and I go back to my room, I'm like, man. What big boy got going on? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, big boy, the next day, me and bump mate down there talking again. Bump mate real happy here in a jolly mood. He say, uh, you know him and his girl doing all right. I think he had a girl before they broke up. He got a new girl. The girl he talking to now, he, uh, he only been talking to her for a couple weeks. So he like, him and his girl doing all right. We, we just came back from breakfast. Breakfast, we went out at like 4 a.m. And uh, we came back in probably like 425, 430 when we got back. Me and Bump made on the top range upstairs. We just talking outside the room. I'm really getting ready to end this conversation so I can go back in the room and lay down. Big Boy didn't come out for breakfast. He usually do. Big Boy don't miss no meals now. I ain't being funny. I'm dead serious. Big boy don't be missing no meal. Now, big boy got to eat. But he missed breakfast. And uh, I don't know, man. I, I just I really wanted to go just straight up talk to him. Like, bro, just tell me. You know what I'm saying? But I was respecting him saying he didn't want to talk. Uh, next thing you know, big boy ended up coming out the room. Big Boy, I immediately knew something was wrong because Big Boy had a skull cap on. Now, it was kind of cool. I ain't going to lie. But Big Boy usually don't walk around with no skull cap on. He had a skull cap on. I looked down at his feet. He had his boots on. And you could tell if some boots 
tied real tight or if they just kind of loose. These boots was tied real, 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 real tight. I, um, I immediately knew something was wrong. And he's walking down towards where me and uh, uh, Bump made it. So I know for a fact he about to come tell us what the real issue was. And then he's probably about to go do something crazy. That's what I'm thinking. Big boy walked down there to where we at. He stopped probably about two, three feet in front of us. And uh, he went looking back and forth for me and Bump, mate. Me and Bump, mate. He like, what type of games y'all playing? Which one of y'all playing games with me like this? So... I'm like, what? What is you talking about, bro? He just keeps saying that. What type of games y'all playing? Woo -de -woo -de -woo. Y'all playing games with me. So I'm observing his body, like especially all around his waist area and his pocket area. I'm, I'm observing. I'm trying to see if I see something. Now on the right side of his hip, just slightly when he stand, when he like repositioned a certain way, I can see um. Um, a candy bar, like sticking through the top of the pants. Now, when I say candy bar, I'm just changing my words up because of, uh, you know, my videos has been getting limited uh, so I could make some money. So y'all know what I'm saying when I say candy bar. That's going to be the new lingo from now on. So uh, I see it sticking out a little bit. So I'm like, damn, I got to finesse this situation that I could get in my room and get my candy bar just in case Big Boy try something crazy. So I'm like, Big Boy, you tripping, bro. You know what I'm saying? What is you talking about? Woo -woo -woo -woo. So he keep looking back and forth for me and Bumpmate. Now I look at Bumpmate. Bumpmate kind of like froze for a minute. Then he looked at me and was like, man, what Big Boy talking about? So I was like, man, I don't know. I'm not even about to entertain it, bro. You tripping. So I do like that. I was right by my room and I just walk in my room real quick. But I really purposely did that. Like I say, so I can secure myself, protect myself. So once I made it in my room, I hurry up and ran over there to my bed, grabbed my candy bar from up under the pillow, stuck it in my pocket, and then I went back out the room. Big boy and bunk mate was out there arguing. Um, so uh, Big boy looked at me and was like, Bro, one of y'all playing game. One of y'all done wrote my auntie a letter. And y'all think I wasn't going to find out about it. One of y'all playing game. So I'm like, what? I wrote your auntie a letter? So I look at Bunk Mate. Bunk Mate looking at me like, man, that man tripping. Bunk Mate walk off. He like, man, you tripping, bro. I ain't staying with you. Tell you nobody wrote nobody no letter. He walk off. So I tell Big Boy, I asked him straight up. I was like, bro, is you, is you high? Is you geeked up or something? I knew he didn't do stuff, but I'm, I don't know now. I'm like, bro, is you geeked up? So he like, nah, bro. Somebody wrote my auntie a letter. Y'all the only two be in my room. So I'm like, bro, if somebody wrote your auntie a letter, why you don't just, okay, your auntie told you, right? He like, yeah. I'm like, why you don't just ask her who name on the letter? Duh, that's just common sense. So he like, nah, she won't tell me. Woo, 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 woo. So I'm like, so what? So she told you somebody wrote me and didn't tell you who it was? That don't even sound right. So he like, bro, man, my auntie told He said, I was talking to my auntie the other day. He was like, and she told me she wanted to tell me something. So I was like, what's up? And she was like, you know, we ain't never lied to each other. And so I just want to be honest with you about something to tell you something. He was like, he asked her, what's up? And she, he said, his auntie said, Probably about a month or two ago, a dude wrote me from in there and he told me he got your um he got my address because he seen it in your room. He sent me a picture of himself. I think he's a nice looking guy. Now you could take you could buy picture coupons off the commissary at certain uh schools and then they'll let you go to the to the gym and take pictures of yourself so you can send it to your family. So he said his auntie said he sent me a picture of himself. He's a nice looking guy. And I've been talking to him lately. I've been writing him this, this, and that. And, um, you know, I think I'm really falling for him. I think he's a real nice guy. He got his head on his shoulder. You know, he just made a mistake when he was young. 
and I kind of want to deal with him and stuff like that. So he said, he asked his auntie, well, who is it? What's his name? And he said she didn't tell him yet because she, uh, she said she didn't want to start no confusion or nothing like that. So, um, you know, he got mad, spazzed out, hung up on her, whatever the case is. So, now at this point, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like if he's not geeked up, if he's not tripping, I already know what's going on. Because the other morning, Bump Mate was just sitting here talking to me about this new girl he been dealing with for about a month. So in my mind, I feel like, ooh, I'm feeling like I already know the move. But I just don't, I still don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because I kind of think Big Boy tripping a little bit. So I'm talking to Big Boy. You know, I'm just talking to him like, bro, ain't no way you came out here showing no type of aggression on me and Bump Mate. You know what I'm saying? Especially me. Bump, Bump Mate. Ain't no way you come out here showing that type of energy towards me, bro. I ain't, you already know, I'm not even on that type of stuff, but I, if, if I rock with you every day and I'm cool with you, how you just flip the script up, you coming out here like you about to do something. So he like, nah, bro, you don't understand the feeling. And he was right because I'd never been through nothing like that. So I didn't understand the feeling. Um, so I told him, I was like, look, bro, this is all you got to do. Or nah, but he said he know it had to be one of us because we the only two people that come in his room and that see his information. I was like, I told him, like, I wasn't trying to say nothing to indicate bunk mate, but I am saying stuff to not have me in the equation. I'm like, bro, I'm the one that tell you all the time, rip that information up, turn that around, don't do that. What I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I don't play no games like that. And then I was young then, I was like 22, so... You know, I was still kind of fresh in. I wasn't finna play no type of games, period. Um, so I told him, I say, bro, all you got to do is just ask your auntie. So he was like, she ain't going to tell me, bro, because she think I'm mad. I say, listen, you got to finesse the situation. I told him, call your auntie back. You got to be real, real cool, calm, and collective. Don't be tripping. Don't be cussing, fussing. Um, don't show no anger, no aggression. Just talk cool. You got to finesse it. Tell her you thought about it and you know you ain't mad no more. Tell her that her happiness matters. And if that's what she want to do, you perfectly fine. You will look out for him. Like whatever you got to say to make her come up off that information, ask her. I mean, do it. So later on that day, you know, because the phones don't come on until... Um, Monday through Thursday, the phones, the collect phones don't activate until 12. And then on the weekend, Saturday and Friday, Saturday and Sunday, they come on at 8 a.m. So later on that day, I think he said she got off work at like 4 p.m. So later on that day, he called her back. And, uh, I guess he finessed the situation real good or whatever. He came back up there to my room. He didn't even knock. I knew it was something because people always knock on your door before they come in. Hey, man. Go upstairs. Go. So, people knock on your door before they come in. And um, he didn't even knock. He just swung the door open. My roommate was standing right there at the first box. My roommate went to jumping and flinching, grabbing his candy bar because he don't know who this is just snatching the door open. So Big Boy was like, oh, no, 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 it's just me, bro. It's just me. Um, so uh, he like, oh, no, nah, man, don't be opening the door. He was a little Hispanic dude. He was, he was about gone. He like, bro, don't just be opening that door like that. So Big Boy was like, my bad, man. I just came to holler at Bill real quick. So my roommate stepped out the way. Big Boy came over there. He said, bro, I just got off the phone with auntie. I was like, what she say? He said, man, bump mate, bro. He talking about, she talking about, so she, she love him, this, this, and that. I'm like, no, he talking about, yeah, bro. So it just got quiet for a minute. He didn't say nothing, I didn't say nothing, but I'm thinking what you gonna do about it or, you know, is you gonna be cool with it or whatever the case is, but I ain't wanna say nothing too soon. I just wanted to give him time to think. So I felt like he didn't really wanna, cause when he said that part, he was kinda like leaning in, whispering a little bit. So I was like, he probably don't wanna really talk in front of my roommate. 
So I told my roommate, I was like, hey, bro, let me uh, let me get the room about five minutes. Let me talk to bro about something. So my roommate was like, all right. He grabbed his candy bar, put it in his pocket, and he walked out the room. Um, soon he walked out the room. Big boy was like, bro, that man really got my auntie address and wrote her a letter, bro, sending her a picture of himself. And his eyes started to water up. And I knew it hurt, like, Cause like I say, me and bump mate, he kick it. Me and bump mate is not as tight, but me and big boy tight, and then big boy and bump mate tight. You know what I'm saying? Me and bump mate, that wasn't really. I just felt like he was kind of extra, so I didn't really. I was cool with him, but we didn't get too, too, too cool. But um, um, I guess he felt betrayed. You know what I'm saying? He just felt like I thought me and big me and uh bump mate was better than that. I didn't even think he'd do nothing like that. And, you know, that was parts of my journey where I was learning things about people and, you know, just stuff like that. So uh, I told him, uh, I was like, what you going to, uh, you going to shoot him a one? And, you know, that just basically means people going in there, scrapping, getting it out the way. So uh, he was like, yeah, man, I think that's what I'm going to do. He got up and walked out the room. So I was like, ah, oh, they about to fight. So I'm getting up to come look. And soon as I got up, he was coming back in the room. He was like, you know what, bro? My auntie happy, bro. I ain't even studying it, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was like, for real? He was like, yeah, bro. I ain't studying that, bro. He was like, she happy. That's what she want. That's what make her happy, bro. Who am I to, you know what I'm saying? And then I told him, I was like, bro, you know what, bro? That's real maturity, bro. Like, that is, that is real maturity for you to say that and, like, mean that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dang, because I ain't gonna lie, a lot of other people would have responded differently ASAP, you know what I'm saying? Especially, like, yeah. So, um, I'm gonna probably say about a week later now, 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 Big Boy asked me not to say nothing about it because he didn't say nothing about it to uh, Bump Mate yet. He told his auntie, don't say nothing about it. He just going to wait, give it a little time. Ain't nobody saying nothing about it. So one morning, one morning, they uh, they called breakfast. Early in the morning, they called breakfast. And uh, I went out the room. I seen bunk mate standing outside his room. I asked him, I said, you going to breakfast, bro? He said, nah, I ain't going up there. I'm straight smiling and stuff. I don't know what he got going on. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm walking past Big Boy room. He usually come to breakfast. I just knocked on the door, opened the door. He putting his shoes on. I'm like, you coming to breakfast? He just did it like that. So I'm like, I walk out the room. When, um... Uh, when I walked back out, I looked at bump mate again, and he was smiling, bro. I don't know what was going on, so, but I could smell it in the air, bro. It's so crazy to say for the people that has never experienced um, anything involving death, like far as witnessing it or seeing it or being right there, it's happening in front of you. It's so crazy, man. It's like a feeling. It's like a, a smell. Even before it happened, I don't even really know how to explain it, but it, it's like something that comes over your body, and it's like you know that this is near. But the feeling is so scary because it don't tell you if it's you or somebody else. You know what I'm saying? It's just a feeling. And uh, I feel like I could smell it, but I know I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? So I walk to breakfast, I'm paranoid the whole way because I know what I'm feeling. I have felt this before. And every time I felt this, somebody ended up slumped or I was ended up in a situation that could have led to somebody being slumped. So the whole time I'm walking to breakfast, I'm clutching my candy bar. I got the candy bars in my pocket, but my hand in my pocket too. And I'm clutching it tight, just looking around every time. Um, ain't nothing going on or nothing like that. So 
We go to breakfast. While we eating breakfast, it's a sergeant. He's in there just monitoring the breakfast, monitoring, making sure we don't do nothing crazy in there. He just walking around. He might say, five minutes left. And then, you know, as time go by, four minutes left, stuff like that. Next thing I know, I don't remember what they, I don't remember the exact code, but somebody, it was a female, her voice, the radio that he had on his, like on his chest right here. It was like loud screaming, loud, loud, loud screaming through the radio. And, um, she was screaming something real loud. And, man, we didn't know. I couldn't even understand. She was calling a cold, but it's like she was crying and screaming at the same time. So I couldn't even really understand what the lady was saying. And um, um, the sergeant took off. He left us in the uh, chow hall. He left us in there, took off running. All the other staff, like, we all jumped up looking through the windows. Going out the child hall door, you see staff members from everywhere. Uh, this had to be like 2015, maybe. Mid-15 to early 16, you see staff members running. All of them running. We trying to see what building they going to. Now, they running in the direction of our building, but we can't really tell because it's other buildings right there. So now that they get directly in front of our building, we know they're going to our building. Now, the dorms are set up like this. You got the one side and the two side. So they unlocking the gate to get to the building. So now everybody looking, trying to see what dorm they going in. We on the one side. So if they go on the one side, that's our dorm. If they go on the two side, that's the other dorm. So um, we, in the, we on the one side. So the officer get through the gate and they run straight into our dorm, bro. And I say... Damn, you know what I'm saying? But really, it's still not even registering right now, to be honest, because I'm so paranoid when everybody grouped up looking out these windows and coming out the door. I'm looking, but I got my back against the wall. I put my back against like the concrete on the door, on the uh, building, and I pulled the candy bar out. I ain't going to lie, I took it out because I already know the feeling I was feeling. Now, everybody grouped up and bunched up. I don't know what to think. But I'm looking at the police trying to see what dawn they going to. But at the same time, I'm looking at everybody else out here too. Like, you know, what y'all finna try to do? And um, probably about 15 minutes later, one of the staff members came out that dawn. He made us all go back into the chow hall, every single one of us, and he locked the door. He locked us in the chow hall. So I'm like, man, what's going on, man? We in this chow hall about two hours straight. Um, we in there, well, we was in there longer than that. We was in there for like two hours straight when we seen GBI coming on the compound, going towards the building. So right then and there, you already know GBI, they only about coming down here for one thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if they come for other things, but when somebody get flipped and they land their slump, GBI coming. That's the only thing I know about. So GBI in there for a minute, then you see the ambulance. The actual ambulance drove on the compound like they're actually driving through it. And uh, we all at the window looking, man. And um, 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 you seen them going in the dawn with a stretch, coming back out with it. Somebody was on it. You, I couldn't see from, from the distance, I couldn't see no features. I couldn't tell how big the body was, what color of the skin. Well, I mean, the body was covered up anyway, but I mean, like, from being under the cover, I couldn't tell the frame of the body because it was so, um, like I said, the distance. It was good distance between us. But I'm just thinking in my head, like, man, dang, that's crazy. And, um... Everybody, everybody in the child hall baffled. They don't know what's going on. Everybody like, man, what? So one of the guys, his roommate was having heart trouble. So he went to tell everybody, man, I bet money that's my roommate. I bet money my roommate done passed because he be having heart issues. I bet money that's my roommate. Next thing you know, once the, once the ambulance leave, the GBI was there for a minute. Once they left, 
Um, all the deputy wardens or securities, you know, they had been in there. They left. When they was leaving, they was bringing somebody out with them handcuffed. And uh, a dude walked across the walked across the yard, getting ready to go to the hole. We all looking out the door. It's Big Boy. Big Boy got um. You could tell Big Boy just really pulled somebody out. I mean, his blood all over him. It's on the front of his stomach. On his shoulders, even a little bit on his face. It was something in his hair, man. And uh, they took Big Boy to the hole. Then the officers came in there and was like, hey, man, the warden going to give out some packages. We need a cleanup crew real quick. We need like six people to get in this dorm and clean up real quick. He going to give y'all packages. Woo -woo -woo -woo. So he like, who going to do it? Now, everybody went to jumping up, like, I'll do it, I'll do it. But I volunteered because I really wanted to try to get closer to the scene and find out what had happened. And, man, they let us out. They gave us these, like, little things you step into, like some white gown type things that got your body covered up. They gave us, like, a little face mask, and they gave us, like, some little pressure washer type equipment, some scrubbers and stuff. And, man, we went in the dorm, bro, and it looked like, uh, a Michael Myers scene or something, bro. I'm talking about it was everywhere, bro. I don't really want to say it because you know they were saying um saying too much graphic things. So, but y'all know what I'm talking about, bro. It was everywhere. It was on the floor. It was on the top of the range. Um, and the officer when we got down there, the officer was still talking to the warden. She was crying. It was a female, dark skinned female. She was crying. And I know when we was coming through the door, bro, uh, I just heard her saying, she was like, he just kept chasing them and chasing them with the candy bar. And he just kept hitting them and kept hitting them with the candy bar. And she was like, and then he came running over here to the booth. Like right where you walk in, at, it was right there all on the floor. She was like, he came beating on the booth. She said, so I hit the button to unlock the door to let him out. She said, but Big Boy was on him with that candy bar. Then Big Boy looked at me. And was trying to tell me, come out the door. Like, he went to grabbing the bars, pulling on the door. She like, I was just so scared. Woo -woo -woo -woo. And she say, man, dude fell on the ground. Big boy kept hitting, kept feeding him that candy bar. I'm talking about, bro, she was shaking. Her whole body was shaking. She was crying. Bro, it was everywhere. You could tell it started at the top because it was like a little bit right there. Then as it, it was just like they was running in zigzag. She say, big boy was just chasing them, hitting them with the candy bar. And then I heard her say, like, I just don't understand how these other uh, students can stand here and watch that because there was a few people in the dorm that didn't go to breakfast, you know, that stepped out the room when they heard, like, screaming and hollering. She say, uh, bunk mate was screaming and hollering, please stop, you know, stuff like that. And um, she said, uh, you know, they was just looking, but, you know, that's just, that's the rules in school. You know, people just mind their business. Uh, neither one of them was affiliated with a gang either, so that's another reason people probably just Mind they business or whatever. And, um, you know, man, I talk to Big Boy to this day. To this day, I still talk to Big Boy. Um, he had went to, he had went to, uh, High Max. He was locked in a room by himself for five years. And then they eventually let him out and let him back into regular, uh, but he, he did something else. Now he back on High Max right now. But, uh, yeah, I still talk to him to this day. And, uh, he told me, bro, like, he was just like, when, when she told me that, I knew I wasn't going to let it slide off the dribble. And he told me, he was like, I knew it wasn't you, bro. He was like, I just did that because I just kind of wanted to just read, just to make sure. He was like, I felt like I knew it was him, but I wanted to make sure. So I wanted to give him an option to know, like, well, he's not the only suspect here. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, man, that's the, that's the situation on that, man. That's why it's very, very, very dangerous trying to do that. You know, trying to reach out to anybody, people, that's that's the you know, the worst thing I ever advise anybody to do who's in school, who's in that situation. But man, for y'all young ones, man, just avoid ever being in a situation like this in general by doing the right thing, bro. You see what I'm saying? Don't even do nothing to have you in one of these schools and go through something like this. Just do the right thing from the beginning. You will never have to worry about stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? But that man lost his life, bro, about sending somebody a letter. 
It's that simple. It's that simple. One decision you make. Think about how many decisions we make every day. We make decisions every day. Can you just imagine one decision that you think in your mind is a good decision, but you know you're wrong, but you're thinking at the end of the day it's going to play out. It's going to be a good decision. Just think about you make one decision, and that can have your whole life snatched from you. That's why it's important, man. Stay out these people's schools, man. Just live right, bro. Live right, bro. That's it, y'all. I'm gone. I'm about to sign out. Whatever y'all want, you know, questions, whatever, just drop it in the comments. I'll get to it. Love y'all, man. Forget, remember, y'all my family, y'all not my subscribers.